righty. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another weekly uh, Ask Me Anything session. Cute for teams, champions using teams effectively. Glad to see everybody here this morning. Um, and if you're here, you came for either two things. Either you came with a question that you wanted to ask about teams and collaboration with Microsoft 365, and that's cool. Um, or you came to hear what new topic Stacy and I and, uh, and and Nash, uh, he's not available today, but you came to see what topic we're going to talk about. And that's cool, too. So if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the chat or we can just jump right in. You can even come off mute right now and uh, chat. But that's what we're here for is to just geek out on teams. Um, so, yeah, with that, I'll just pause. Anybody you know needed to come off mute and maybe ask a question? no pressure. <laughs> we certainly have stuff to talk about. I and wanted to give time for people to, to chime in so I didn't monopolize it. Uh, I had the opportunity yesterday to use uh, a poll inside of a meeting. It was really exciting, except yeah. there was a little bit of a pause between when I needed the responses to display and um, closing the poll. And I couldn't figure out how to get the responses to display. This is a forms poll. Yes. Response uh, a delay. I remember if on that form when you create a poll, is one of those options, Ricardo? And we may have to just fire up my demo really quickly. Isn't one of those options to show the responses or not? I think it does sound familiar. Yeah, if you've got the got the demo. Or We've used yeah. that before, and you can hide the results. Uh, we've used it for things like um, voting because we didn't want the vote to be the voters to be swayed by the current trend of the poll. Mm. Uh, so you can hide it, and then the author of the poll can just screenshot the results and paste it into the chat. Oh, okay. So manuals uh, paste well in that scenario when you're hiding it initially, then you manually paste it later. Yeah, gotcha. The author will always see the results, but you can prevent the attendees from seeing it. All right. Well, let's see. I wonder how quickly I can fire this up. And there's a couple of ways to create that poll. But since I didn't go and tell the meeting in advance that I wanted to do a poll, I'll go ahead and do one here. Yeah, so this is the I, one I have in mind here. Option. But is that to the individual once they cast their vote or once the poll is closed? I think as soon as the voting occurs, they're going to see the they're going to see the needle move across as more votes come in. Oh, OK. You were looking for an automatic show the results only after you've closed the poll kind of a thing. Yeah, I, th I think that was my expectation. Okay. Yeah, I think um, the suggestion about maybe manually posting those probably. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's built in a show after close kind of a feature. OK, and I may have been superimposing an experience in a different platform thinking that it was something I saw here, so. So it's going to be anonymous and the results are going to be shared. So anyone who's watching the chat after I hit submit is going to see that one vote has come in for red. And as the votes are coming in, it's going to continue to tally, which okay. for better, for worse, that's what that that option indicated. And do you have to go into the fire up the meeting in order to create the polls for that? No. In fact, let me show you since I didn't do it. 
and I'll go back to my calendar and let's say um, that we hadn't already started this meeting. So I've just created the calendar event. Now I can come back here by opening the details and I can tell it that I want to create um, polls while I'm in the meeting. And then it's going to bring me to a place where I can begin to design them even before the meeting starts. So this is what you'd do if you had multiple that you wanted to queue off at different points during the meeting. You could create them all in advance and then determine which ones you wanted to launch and when. So now this one happens to already be run, so I can go ahead and close that one. And then I can create additional ones that I can issue during the session. Okay. And if you were doing that in advance and wanted to do it collaboratively, is there the ability to um, specify who the collaborators are or? No, your meeting is only going to have one organizer at this point. Um, I wonder. I, I was not the organizer on the meeting that I did this in, though. Did you do it during the meeting using chat? You just didn't you, you didn't do it in advance, though, right? I did, but I think I I initiated the, the meeting so that it was actually live so that the tab was up there and then um, had the same interface and, and did three three different ones in there. But it clearly stated that that it was only me that had access that I was the creator. Uh, so I was hoping to, to share it with somebody else to see did I get this what the essence of what we wanted to ask. Uh, but wasn't able to do that. OK, yeah, I don't think that they can author the polls with you, but you could certainly do what I'm doing now and schedule a time to talk and share your screen and go over these okay. in their in their draft pre launch state and make any tweaks you needed to. Because I was actually surprised that I was able to do that, not as the the originator of the meeting. So. Yeah, I wonder if I can verify that really quickly. Let's see. But I think that the way, organizer well, has to add forms, right? But then anybody who's a presenter can author forms. I believe. I've had mixed results with that lately, so that's a different problem. But I thought that was how it was supposed to work. Mm. Yeah, I, I hope to verify that in just a second because I'm going to launch one of my um, other personas and give it a go with her knowing that she wasn't the organizer of that meeting and see what we're By the way I, I did notice that co co-organizers is on our roadmap um, in the next couple months or something like that so there will come a day when you can designate another organizer I don't uh, I know it's it mentioned uh, most of the stuff an organizer can do that co-organizer can do so i don't know what's not on the list but um probably at least most of the stuff that we've been waiting for stacy your screen is black right yeah now. it's it is attempting to share and struggling so i'm oh, gonna okay. try to cancel and reload thought this was a new like dark mode feature or something. <laughs> No, I I need to. Gosh, I may need to drop and come back because it is unresponsive. One okay. sec. Yep. I did see in the chat asking about Teams webinars, which for uh, for government I think is rolling out in the October October November time frame. Oh, is that? Uh, oh, Stacy's there still. Okay. Yeah, we can see your screen now. But yeah, to the, to the question of um, yeah, Teams webinars is coming out. And uh, there. Uh, let me see. Is Stacy trying to come back? I'm back. I'm back. Oh, OK. Gotcha. Sorry about that. I think all of my clicking while I was um, locked up caught up with me all at the same time. <laughs> OK, um, so what I wanted to show. Is what happens when Johanna, who is not the organizer of the meeting, 
Now, um, I think it was Dwayne who said that now that forms has been added by the organizer, Johanna does have access to come in and create new, and she can add additional things. Now, remember when you're, unless you say that um, someone who you've invited to the meeting is an attendee, they're going to have access to quite a bit of this. So Johanna is in the same org as the or organizer and therefore uh, comes in as a presenter with these options. So that makes sense to me, actually, because the admin, the organizer had already added polls and is able to march forward. Now, even if they hadn't, I still have the ability to add additional tabs, even though I'm not the organizer, because we're all in this particular meeting as presenters. So we have confirmed, um, Jim, we confirmed your experience that you were able to go in even um, not as a, an organizer, but rather a presenter and add polls and draft polls there. And I think that's exactly what I did. So and your organizer, if your organizer is the one that you want to review your polls in advance, um, they likely could come and, and take a look at what was there. Okay. But Thanks. like I said, you still have the, the screen sharing option and a ad hoc one-to-one -one call where you could review that with them. I was going to say, Stacey, while you're while you're there, uh, if you had that um, app um, you were talking about. Oh yeah, yeah. So I had an opportunity to talk through the Champion Management Platform app recently uh, with one of our customers. And in preparation for that, I deployed it to my GCC tenant with no problems. And the, the process was so seamless. The um, platform is designed on a SharePoint background. And let me actually go ahead and share my screen and I'll talk you through some of this. I'll also paste. Yeah, I was going to put links in there for you. Oh, awesome. Yeah, if you don't mind doing that, Ricardo, that would be helpful. So. What you're looking at here um, is the champion management platform that Microsoft has built and, and has provided through GitHub. And the goal is to have a SharePoint communication site with some lists that prepare you to keep track of and prescribe um, events or work to a champions group and keep track of who's doing what you're asking them to do and and motivate them a bit through a little bit of friendly competition it brings a little bit of the gamification aspect in uh, which is helpful when you're trying to motivate folks through an adoption um, process so the platform um, tackles a couple three different aspects it has program management to help you manage your champions group um, it has a leaderboard where your champions can submit the activities that they are successfully completing and those activities have points associated with them and it's going to stack those folks in their um, rank based on how many points they've completed and there's even a digital badge that can be applied to the profile picture of the participants. Um, what I love about this solution is what you get from GitHub does so much of the work for you because it sets up that communication site, it creates those lists that are needed to drive it, and it provides you with the skins for the, or it provides you with the app skins that um, make the group uh, or that make the platform sing once it's pinned in Teams. So in a channel in Teams, your champions can access this and participate in that, um, that leaderboard there. They can suggest additional members, which I think is a very interesting thing to think about when you're talking about champions. So much work is put into identifying who those core champions might be. But honestly, once you have that baseline of champions, um, having them be able to foster champions even further by requesting that new members get added, uh, I think is 
uh, genius and would help you grow your champion community very quickly. And then, like I said, there's the interaction that would allow someone to make their profile picture very clearly labeled with a digital badge to indicate um, that they're a champion. So I'm going to jump over to GitHub just to give you a quick overview. This link is also going to be re re, um, provided in the chat. Ricardo is going to throw that in there. Uh, as far as GitHub goes, this is a very straightforward package that's been developed. It's easy to download. It's easy to deploy. You do need a um, SharePoint administrator to deploy this. They take the app package that we've designed and they plug it into the app catalog in SharePoint. And then the app package does the rest. It builds out the three major components, the um, champion management section, the leaderboard, and the digital badging, and makes it all very convenient to pin into Teams. So in GitHub, you can get a better look at the different screens that are embedded and are part of the solution. And it'll walk you through what the solution is intended to do. And you have a couple of installation options. I went with the standard because I didn't need to customize any particular columns or information. If you do, however, uh, doing the um, customizations is very straightforward. And GitHub, they've taken a good, um, a they've taken the opportunity to give you a good guidance around customization. But you can see <clears throat> you're going to deploy that SharePoint package and then you're going to walk through the rest of these instructions. And I think in total it took me about an hour and a half with some interruptions to get this deployed yesterday in my demo tenant. It was a very smooth deployment. And there are no additional charges associated with this. I know some of our app templates that have maybe some Azure storage aspects or other aspects to them may have some additional costs. This one in particular does not. And once you've got it deployed and you've got that SharePoint site built out, then you can take the app and come in and plug it into a channel. I created this team, this Tech Liaison Champion team. Um, I can't take credit for that name. That is a, a fantastic name for a champions group that my customer is considering using. Um, but we had a, another aspect to this that I'll take a second and just mention is that I created this team based on the Office 365 Adoption Teams template. Um, if you're not aware, there are templates available in your team creation. If you don't see that when you go to create a new team, then your team's administrator just has to turn on the ability to use templates. And there's templates of all kinds. If we get a second towards the end, although I know we're running a little low on time, or maybe that's a topic for another one, uh, Ricardo, we can cover the templates that are available now. Yeah. But this one had a general channel, of course, because you know all Teams channels have a general, or all Teams have a general channel. And then it came with an announcements, a calendar that takes advantage of the shared calendar, a champion's corner, which I would presume is for uh, those champions to pose questions to each other and discuss it with each other, and then a place for team forms. I would suggest that that one, that channel would be ideal for collecting feedback on any of the, the program events that you set out for these folks. But I logged in as the administrator and I'm gonna go to the general channel where I pinned my champion management platform. And as an administrator, I have access to the champions list. This is all the people that are pending or approved members of the champions group. I have the events list that I can customize to prescribe whatever training, whatever event, whatever video they need to watch, whatever document you want them to read, that's customizable there. And the event track list is where your, um, where your champions are going to be recording all of the activities that they're doing. And each of these activities, when you create it in the events list, you can assign a point amount to it. So let's say you may want to wait um, live in-person training higher than perhaps reviewing a document, um, but that's totally up to up to you because it is customizable. And that's where those 
those events are going to be stored. And then because I'm in the admin, I have the ability to manage the approvals. So let's say one of my champions suggests that they know another potential champion. They click add members. It populates that person into a list and then I can manage their approvals there. I'll go ahead and click on these just so you can see how these are formulated in SharePoint because when I click them from Teams, it's going to launch SharePoint and take me directly to the list. You can see I have four champions right now, including myself. All are in approved statuses and in the process of them becoming a champion as they're suggested as a member, I can get some other important information about them, like perhaps what region they're working in, what country, what role they're working in, what their focus area might be, or what their grouping is, whether it's IT or the business or sales or something like that. And I can absolutely govern what information is contained in these um, in these columns. Like I'll show you very quickly the regional column. I imagine I have a lot of folks here um, who are all US based and all of their uh, employees or staff are US based also. So I would imagine you'd want to repurpose this particular column. You can come in and edit this as um, as the manager of the champions management platform and you can change these to whatever regional settings or location settings or perhaps department settings uh, that you need to in order to tailor this list to your use but like i said this is the um, this is the list of those members and then next we'll look at the list of the events so i put in these three prescribed events one being for teams meetings one for onedrive one for reviewing some documentation and you can see here i've assigned those points so as users step through the process and they start recording their actions their points are getting tallied and then they're being put in this leaderboard here I'll go ahead and click there as well so you can see that firsthand. So as the administrator, I am globally ranked as number one of the four champions. Imagine that because I've done all the trainings that are available today. I can see that Johanna has started. Deborah's just approved late yesterday. Hasn't had a chance to do much yet, but I'm sure she'll catch up quickly. And in this dashboard, you can see the rank, of course. And you can also take a look at the um, submitted ones that I have sent in. Remember, this app is in Teams and it's scoped to me as the admin. And I can record new events to earn those points. So I can go in and look at the calendar and I can select the events that I've completed and then I can click add and it's automatically going to do that tallying for me and keep track of that event that was listed in our tracking list here. So as your end users are submitting that they've completed things, that's going into this comprehensive track list, which then as a manager, I would imagine it would be super helpful to see this tallied by the person's name. So I can tell which, um, which of my champions is moving along faster in the curve and I could also do some sorting and some filtering to identify what are the most common events that folks are using so you will be able to get some data out of this from the participation of your members let me show you really quickly the last little aspect because I think we're running out of time um, this uh, is going to need an API access to your Azure Active Directory so that it can have access to your profile picture and overlay the champions badge. So if any of your champions are interested in doing that, this is built into the app. They can come and they can apply the image and it will take up to 24 hours to see that update reflected. But what it does is it drops it over the top of their profile picture on the left hand side. Hopefully um, not going over their face or anything like that, but allowing them to stand out amongst their peers with that badge. 
I am not watching chat. Ricardo, are there any questions, anything I should address? Jim was asking if the tasks to be completed are customizable. Yes, yeah. yes, they are. Let me jump to this list. Um, I'll go ahead and create a new one just so you can see the, the uh, form out of the box. But let's say this is a um, polls in meetings session. We'll give it 25 points. And you can tell it whether it's active or not. And if you have any additional attachments, say perhaps this one had to do with um, reviewing something that you could attach here. Um, the ability to add the attachment is there. And if you wanted to change anything about this list, as the manager, as the person who is going to own your management platform or someone that they delegate, you would need SharePoint, uh, SharePoint rights here in order to edit this list, but you could certainly change it from the default. You could add additional columns or you could tweak the way uh, the existing columns operate in order to suit whatever, you, whatever data you need to gather or include in the events that you may form and assign out. So the short answer was yes. <laughs> Awesome. This is good stuff. You may think because of the name of this uh, and the name of this cute champions using Teams effectively that, you know, we sponsored this, but this is not related to this webinar. <laughs> True. Just, uh, has the same name. <laughs> right. Awesome. Well, hopefully that was helpful. Um, yeah, we are at time here. Um, I mean, I did take notes about uh, some of the things in chat and, uh, you know, that we can do in future sessions. So we we kind of have a running list of stuff to talk about, um, things that we don't get to talk about, you know, in the session because we run out of time. So um, do know at some point if, if, uh, if we talked about it, we'll, you know, at some point try to bring it, you know, to you here in this session. We may want to consider, I don't know, maybe this needs to be a 45 minute session. I don't know. Maybe throw a throw a I don't know. A, thumbs up or something in a chat if you think this should be longer but um but yeah we'll definitely hit these topics later and um hopefully this week was helpful Any, anything else stacy uh or anybody on the on chat yeah i don't think so okay. i'm sure there's plenty we could continue talking about but we want to be respectful of time and yeah i i would be willing to have this extend a little bit anytime yeah. someone needed it awesome Awesome. All right. With that, uh, we'll wrap this up and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining.